In today's video, we're going to talk about running Selenium testing in the Docker container. So first, I'm going to go through a PowerPoint and introduce Docker, and then I'll go into some code examples using Docker. So Docker is a platform designed to make it easier to create, deploy, and run applications using containers. Containers allow developers to package an application and its dependencies into a standardized unit for software development, which includes everything needed to run it. So the code, the runtime, the system tools, and the libraries, and so on. So some advantages of Docker is that it allows for consistent testing environments. Docker ensures consistency across environments by encapsulating the testing setup, dependencies, and configurations within Docker's uh, containers. This consistency minimizes issues related to differences between development, staging, and production environments. Docker also allows for isolation and reproductivity. Each test can be run uh, within its own isolate container, ensuring that the test environment is reproducible and separate from other test runs. This isolation prevents interference between tests and enhances uh, reproducibility. So here are some more advantages of Docker. So the first one, scalability. Docker enables easy scaling of test automation by allowing the quick deployment of containers Tests can be run in parallel across multiple containers, facilitating faster execution and enabling efficient use of resources. It also allows for easy setup and configuration. Docker simplifies the setup process for Selenium automation testing. With pre-built Docker images containing Selenium and browser configurations, setting up the testing environments uh, become straightforward and reduces setup times and complexity. And then also resource efficiency. So Docker containers have a minimal footprint and can consume fewer resources compared to virtual machines. This efficiency allows for running multiple tests simultaneously on a single host without a significant overhead. So next we'll talk about portability and reusability. So Docker containers are portable, allowing the easy transfer of test environments across different machines or cloud services. This portability enhances the reusability of the testing environment, making it convenient for sharing among team members. Also, something to note is version control and image management. Docker provides version control for images, enabling easy rollback to previous versions if needed. It also allows for the creation of custom images, providing flexibility to tailor the testing environment as required. Also, there's uh, integration with continuous uh, integration pipelines, so Dockerized Selenium tests integrate well with continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines. Uh, the container-based approach allows seamless integration of tests into the pipe, uh, build pipeline, automating test execution, and enabling faster feedback on code changes. So in order to run Selenium testing in Docker, here are some things that you need to do. So first, we have to download and install Docker on their website. After you download and install it, we have to pull these images. And these are already pre-built uh, containers uh, for uh, running Selenium. So we have, um, we have a standalone for Chrome, we have standalones for Firefox, and standalones for Edge. Um, and standalone just refers, um, if you don't know what this means, I would suggest you go back to our previous video with us uh, talking about Selenium Grid. Um, and so standalone just means you're running everything in one system. Um, and then here are some commands to run the standalones. So we have Selenium. Uh, so this is for the Chrome standalone. This is for the Firefox standalone. And these are the ports that we're uh, putting it onto. Um, so after we pull the images, there's also other images that you can pull. So there's images for nodes as well for the Selenium uh, grid architecture. So we have nodes for Firefox, nodes for Chrome, and then uh, we have also um, the, the Firefox debug and the Chrome debug and then the hub as well. And then after this, you also have to start the hub and node. So Docker network create grid. Um, these are the commands that you run in order to start it. So now I have my own project open and I'm just going to show you how we're going to set up our uh, project. Um, so the main focus of today's video is using Docker and not necessarily the coding portion of using Selenium in Python. So um, later on, I'll just be pasting some scripts inside and I'll be going through it briefly, but I just want you to get the general idea of how to use Docker. So for my project right here, I'm going to go under my test folder right here, and I'm actually going to create a new folder. 
um, and I'm going to call it um, Docker. So Docker, and then within Docker, I'm going to create another folder called um, create another folder, and this folder I'm going to call it Node. So over here, little directory, we'll call it Node. And there's a couple things I'm going to put in here. So um, I'm going to copy a few scripts over. I'll go ahead and paste these over. Yeah. So now these are pasted over. So I copied it in it, uh, in it. And then I copied over three files. So standalone Chrome, standalone Edge, and standalone Firefox. <clears throat> These three things do essentially the same thing, um, but they just run on standalone Chrome, standalone Edge, and standalone Firefox. So I'm going to open the standalone uh, Chrome one for you to see. So go ahead and open that. So we see we have standalone Chrome right here. And then there is um, we have three different uh, functions. So the first one, uh, in this one, we're testing uh, Chrome page title URL. So we're going to this URL, we're defining a global driver, and then we're using, uh, notice that we use web driver remote instead in this code um, for the web, uh, web driver. And this is the thing that we need to use um, in order to use our Docker container. Um, some other things that we have to note is that these are all the different packages that we're importing. Uh, but yeah, so this is something that we really have to notice is that we're using web driver dot remote. After that, we're going to go to the URL, and then if it, we can't start, we'll say cannot start browser. And then what we're going to do is we're going to assert that the title in the URL is equal to this, and the URL is equal to this. And then, um, yeah, so that's very simple. We're just checking the title of the URL. Uh, the second function is a submitting a, a form function. So again, we're using webdriver.remote right here. And the URL that we're using is uh, is we're using these URLs. Uh, these are the remote URLs that we're using. Uh, so for Docker, basically all the stuff that we have, we, we can see on this remote URL um, later. Um, but this is not the same as the URL that we'll be visiting. So again, we have our Docker uh, web driver right here uh, hosted on this port. And then we're going to go to this website and then we're going to fill out the form right here. And then we're going to submit um, and execute it. The final one, it's um, we're, we're using PyTest uh, parameterizations. We're using these parameters. Uh, and then we're searching on golf course for these different golf courses. And again, we're using webdriver.remote here. Um, and yeah, so this is how we're going to run it for standalone. So before we do that, um, there's actually some things that we have to use um, uh, we have to do. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is, um, so I'm not going to go through the setup process because I already have it set up on my own computer. I would strongly suggest that you go download Docker, pull the different images for standalones, and then come back again. So after I've done all that, um, uh, I have this, I'm going to start a new one. So people, so we know that we're doing a new, uh, we're using a new one, brand new command prompt, uh, drag it over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in um, I'm going to use standalone for Chrome. So I'm going to use this command right here. So docker run port 445 right here. And then I'm going to use standalone for Chrome. So go ahead and enter that. Um, port is already allocated. So um, go ahead and close that. Uh, run that again. Uh, the port is already allocated. Um, Yeah, so that port was already allocated because I was running uh, using that port earlier. So how you can get around this is you can use docker.ps and this will basically show all your different Docker uh, containers being run right now. And I found this Docker right here, it's using the same port 445. So I used docker stop and I copied this ID over and I stopped it. So now let me go ahead and uh, run this again, enter and yeah, it works nicely. So now I can go ahead and run this. So, bef so I'm going to go ahead and run the first one first. Um, just run this. And you won't really see much because it's running everything in the container. So give it some time to run. You see the test passes. Um, and yeah, that's all you see. Um, we see we ran it in the Docker container. 
Um, but you can actually view what's going on by um, going to the URL right here, localhost 4445. So I'm going to go ahead and open a new Firefox right here. I'm going to go localhost, so I'm going to go 445 right here. <clears throat> so this is what we have right here. Uh, I'm going to see sessions here. We have nothing running right now at the moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run the second one where we're filling out the submit form. And right here, I have a, uh, I have this. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to here and we see our session is running now. I can actually click on this. Um, and what this allows us to do is allows us to look at what's going on while it's running. So that was a bit slow, but we can do it for the third one. Um, for the third one here, we put a sleep statement right here for 10 seconds. So you should be able to see it run. So go ahead and run this. Now I'm going to go back to here, look at my sessions. Um, we see this, again, we open this up. Uh, we enter my password, and then now I can see it's running. I can see that it'll search for the golf courses up here, and then it will, uh, yeah, so <clears throat> give it some time. And yeah, um, so that's, uh, so this is what we have, um, and it's running multiple instances of it. But yeah, so this is what you can do. Um, it's still running. There's three different tests, so it, it does a new one for each test. So the one we view, so if you want to view what's happening for this third test, then you would have to um, click the icon again. So you click this icon again uh, to view what's going on. Um, but uh, the test just finished running, so there's no point of doing this. Um, so the, there's no sessions running now. But yeah, so that's what's standalone. So now I'm going to show you how you can use the hub and the node structures. Um, so what I have here is I actually have some things that are ran in the command prompt. Uh, so first what I did earlier was I stopped the standalone session from earlier. So I used Docker stop and then I found the ID for that Docker session and then I stopped it. And then after that, I created um, some the grid and the hub and the node uh, structure. So the first thing I did was I used Docker network create grid and then I created a hub using this command right here, so hub. And then I created four different nodes. So the node for Chrome, a node for uh, uh, Chrome debug, a node for Firefox, and a node for Firefox debug. I didn't use Edge um, because it's uh, it was giving some issues, but I do use Firefox and Chrome at the same time. And as you can see with my Docker PS right here, I have both the hub uh, right here and the nodes for Chrome and the nodes for Firefox. So with that, um, I'm going to go back to my code and I actually have my uh, project right here. So I have my Docker uh, node uh, code right here and it uses uh, localhost 444 now instead so I'm gonna show you how we uh, traditionally ran it so before we ran it by just running it one at a time so you just click run test right here um, give it some time to load but uh, right here I put sleep for 20 seconds so we can actually see what's happening uh, with our session um, for example um, right here if I open um, actually that's not the right one because uh, we actually uh, ran it in a uh, uh, right here, so this is the one. Um, we see that it's uh, right here, um, but this is just grabbing the URL. But um, so we see that's been run. Um, but um, what we can actually do to run this now is we can actually go to um, this folder right here. So I'm actually going to open a new terminal right here. Um, so right here, uh, this is from previous. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop this. And I'm going to So I stopped this and then now what I'm going to do is I'm actually CD to the test docker and node. So I'm already here. So my current directory is um uh, you see this my current path. I'm in the test folder. I'm in this node folder. And what I can actually do is I can run pytest dash n five and what this will do is this will run all the different uh, scripts inside this folder all at once and right now um, i'll show you how it populates this when i'm running it but let me refresh this um, but yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and run this and we'll see that it's uh, initializing and then uh, we have five different workers, uh, which was parameter five right here. 
go back here and we see that it's gradually progressing and it's adding these different ones up. So it's added this Chrome, uh, it's using this Chrome node right here. Um, and if I use this, I can see what's going on here. And um, if I go back um, to here, to my sessions. Um, so this one is from before. So this is my uh, Firefox hub right here. Um, go ahead and click this. Um, so it seems to be stuck. 